I do so much enjoy community gardens because there's just so much diversity there. They're so intensively planted and uh, everyone has a plot and uh, a lot of different kinds of crops are grown throughout the season. And this is also true of urban settings when you have gardens that are uh, side to side in, uh, in backyards and the kind of thing. So what I wanna talk about a little bit is about community gardens, gardening in the urban settings and responsibilities that we have as part of this gardening community. First of all, in most gardens, we are very limited on the kinds of pesticides that can be used. You have carbaryl, you have pyrethrins, permethrins, uh, soaps, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural spray oils. And just remember that with each of those products, there's a pre-harvest interval. And that means that at the point where you treat, you have to wait so many days before you can actually harvest the crop. So if you're in a setting where there's gardening going, all around, going on all around you, remember that what you apply should be applied directly only on your crop. You should know the pre-harvest interval. You should read your label, but also be wary of uh, the possibility of the insecticide that you apply spreading into your neighbor's garden. So we don't really want that. One of the major problems that we find in midsummer gardens is spider mites, two-spotted spider mites, and they can be on various kinds of crops, especially beans and tomatoes, and they'll move on to other crops. It's important to treat them early when you're first looking at the signs of their damage, which is white stippling on the leaves. They can be treated with insecticidal soaps or horticultural spray oils. They could be treated on a cool morning or in the evening when the wind is down apply with thorough coverage. One of the most pervasive problems that we have in midsummer in summer squashes is squash bug. They're just disgusting and they can multiply so rapidly. If you take a look at the bases of the plants or under the leaves, you can see their uh, golden eggs deposited by the adults. And then by this time, we'll be seeing the nymphs as well, crawling about and scurrying about as they're exposed in the sunlight. But here's a case where they're in this garden setting. This garden has not been kept up very well. And as long as this condition remains where there's squash bugs, lots of weeds, uh, this very potentially can spread to other plots in the garden or your neighbor's squashes. In mid to late summer, grasshoppers become an increasing, almost overwhelming problem in gardens. So if you live out in the country where you have lots of tall grasses in the vicinity of the garden, it's important to be treating the grasshoppers while they are still there. In this garden setting, we have uh, some really close mowing around the entire plot area, which creates a bit of a barrier for grasshoppers and keeps them away. So therefore they're not migrating away uh, into the garden area. So treat the grasshoppers while they're in waste areas, well outside of the garden, while they're still young, and they won't be a problem later in the summer. Now finally, of course, we want to talk about pollinators. As a, a gardener, it's really important to be uh, promoting insect pollinators in your garden because it serves you well to have produce that are pollinated and uh, producing. So whatever pesticide you use, make sure that it's applied in the early morning hours or with a consciousness about impact on um, wild bees, honey bees, and all those other insects that pollinate your valuable crops.